morning to all of you and uh, first of all I must thank the president and the council of the SLME for giving the opportunity to our College of Sri Lanka College of Obstetrics and Gynecology um, to uh, talk today. And uh, so obstetrics and gynecology is a uh, is you are improving the maternity care and disorders related to the reproductive system in order to reduce the perinatal morbidity, mortality, and maternal morbidity and mortality. And gynecological care is to manage gynecological disorders starting from the neonate, it may be the adolescent, it may be the reproductive age, post-reproductive age, as well as family planning and prevention of uh, cancers and so forth. So, when obstetrics and gynecology is concerned, you may be thinking that uh, what is this speciality? Because uh, in obstetrics and gynecology, it's the uterus and two ovaries, right? We are talking only about three organs and two are the same, left and the right ovary. So, but uh, as you know, this field is more complicated. So in order to fulfill the training requirements of obstetrics and gynecology, there is a post-intern, one year is mandatory. And your internship, whether you do obstetrics and gynecology or it's an intern, is irrelevant. Because once there was this requirement um, to do at least six months of obstetrics and gynecology before you sit for the selection exam, but we realized that for some reason, good students select medicine and surgery for their internship. So we were seeing that some good people were losing to our speciality. So rightly, the Board of Study has introduced that there's no need to have obstetrics and gynecology as a prerequisite to sit for the part one selection exam, or it was known as the part one exam, now of course it's known as the selection exam. So the exam format for the selection exam is uh, very straightforward, not complicated unlike a few years back. There's SBA and true false questions. And if you obtain 50%, then you proceed to the next component where you are given six questions, four SCQs and to short answer questions. So if you get 50% uh, uh, aggregate, then you are <clears throat> qualified to the training program. But uh, uh, but there is a card, uh, you know, requirement or whatever. There is a you know there is a category. You are selected. You are qualified but not selected because there's a line being drawn around 30 or 31 for each year. So that's the number of uh, trainees that I enrolled to the program. Um, so in the selection exam, it is advantageous that if you have kind of uh, exposure to obstetrics and gynecology, because in the selection exam, it is, you are tested, your basic sciences knowledge is relevant to clinical specialty. So, if you have some insight into obstetrics and gynecology as the, your internship or in your post intern, that may be an added uh, advantage. Um, part one exam or the selection exam is a very extensive exam, and uh, you can't just study for six months and expect to pass the exam because you are tested anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, you name uh, the entire medical syllabus in your medical school. You are tested on those. So you need to have an in-depth knowledge on basic sciences and um, the paraclinical uh, subjects from pathology, pathology. And also when you're preparing for the exam, you must know the trend of what is happening around. Read journals and see what topics have be prepared on the basic sciences component on those hot topics. So the training program, once you are qualified and uh, selected for the training program, there's a 20 Format registered in service training. It's very extensive and exhaustive training. You're expected to be on call every other day, and uh, then once you finish that, you are 
during the training program, also your training is assessed by uh, nine months, 18 months, logbook, portfolios, and your training is assessed and feedback given to improve your um, training requirements. In the elective appointment is there for six months where you have been uh, given training in gynae oncology at the oncological centers and then some exposure for three months. Again, you will be working as a periphery as a uh, registrar attached to a base hospital. Then once you are successful at the MD exam, then a 12 month senior registrarship is there. And uh, then by that time, you must plan to pass your IELTS exam and uh, proceed for your overseas training. And if you select the subspeciality program that is tiny authority or infertility, then the training program, post MD training program is uh, two years plus one year, two years local, one year overseas, or two years overseas, one year global. And for obstetrics and gynecology, it's a one year overseas training program mandatory, but then we can use it for two years. And uh, once you return, completing your SR and the post and the overseas training, there is a board certification exit evaluation and you have ordered the MD degree and the board certification. So the part of projection, around 30 trainees are annually recruited. We have the exam only once a year. So that also sometimes students, the first exam they sit in medicine, surgery, pediatrics, because anesthesia, they have I think two exams here, but in ours there's only one exam. So if you are really committed, you select the speciality and wait for the exam. Um, so the opportunities are um, not only the government, the health sector, government ministry, then the private sector wants to go certify abroad. You can, you know, jobs are available. There are research jobs in international organizations also employ obstetricians and gynecologists. So, some specialities I have already mentioned about uh, the gynecology oncology and reproductive medicine, where infertility experts are board certified, as well as uh, upcoming uh, subspecialties include fetal medicine, urogynecology. Then, of course, there are special interest areas where you can develop in a general training, maybe managing medical disorders related to pregnancy, family planning, endoscopic surgery, but there's no board certification on those uh, areas. Your responsibilities, unlike most clinical fields, it's uncontrollable working hours. You know, anytime you should be available. It's acute, kind of an acute uh, medicine setup. Uh, uh, you have to be a team leader because uh, you under you there are junior doctors, there are trainees, there are midwives, nurses. So it's very important for you to have a very good working relationship with your team. Because if your team is not functioning as one uh, unit, then your clinical outcome are uh, affected. And all uh, maternal deaths, as you know, unlike in other specialties, are investigated and uh, looked into. There is uh, you know formal inquiries. So you have to be prepared to uh, answer questions and your work is always looked upon. So litigation also in our field is uh, we are liable to be, you know, taken to courts, our practice may be questioned. So you have to keep updated after court certification, before are consulted, you can't just go on with that knowledge practicing for the care. You have to improve your day-to-day, -day, you know, be reading and updated with what is happening. Uh, so the expectations are very high and uh, the work environment sometimes you will be working in, facilities, in hospitals with the basic facilities as well as the cutting edge technologies may be available depending on where you work. So local opportunities in our field, there is a need to improve the quality and always we have to be updated. Uh, expansion of the services happening and the idea is to have at least two VOGs managing a single station so continuous quality care can be uh, delivered. So the private sector is also expanding quite widely, so there is opportunity in the private sector as well as the universities. We know that so many universities are coming up and each obstetrics and gynecology department to run, you need at least four to five minimum uh, board certified consultants. So there's a lot of scope as far as the university system is also concerned. Then the international opportunities, if our trainees after MD part or completing the exam, and if they're successful at the IELTS exam, there are 
paid jobs and uh, some people you know after completing their training they have they, they don't return that's a, another part of the story also our qualification the md qualification most advice specialists can apply and through an interview they can be on par with the ranskog specialist that in australia new zealand so they can get the consultant post in those countries um so the the people who come back sometimes they do go back also so there's a problem with they who are being trained in our special also we have a good international reputation now in this picture there is a presidents of the american college the royal college the australian new zealand college the indian and you know european societies it is our yeah we have a very good recognition internationally as well so our training program in our consultants are widely recognized worldwide so it's a very rewarding uh, specialty overall and uh, there is a, a good job satisfaction as well as the expectations on you and you are recognized in the community so it is a very satisfying specialty for you to select thank you thank you rukshan for sticking to time and uh, we'll take questions at the end if you can just bear with us uh, may I invite uh, 